Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. There is a massive lie within the gay community, among many, that within the church, homosexual priests are not the problem when it comes to clerical sex abuse. That is an enormous lie, a Joseph Goebbels-sized lie. Consider this one simple reality, a known fact. More than four out of every five sex abuse victims were post-pubescent boys. That is the very definition of homosexual. Those numbers, for the record, are from the U.S. Bishop's own report that they commissioned through the College of John Jay in 2004. But two years before that report, Wilton Gregory, who was then president of the U.S. Bishops' Conference at the time, admitted that it was a homosexual problem among the clergy. Remember the timeline here. The Boston Globe dropped its first bombshell report on the clerical sex abuse crisis in January of 2002. The paper kept rolling out investigative reports one after the other showing massive sex abuse and cover-up by the bishops. Three months later, April 23, 2002, Bishop Wilton Gregory stood in front of a crowded international press office at the Vatican and publicly stated the following, quote, it is an ongoing struggle to make sure that the Catholic priesthood is not dominated by homosexual men. His comments came directly in reference to the sex abuse crisis. Likewise, in the exact same context and international press conference, Pope John Paul II spokesman Joaquin Navarro Valls said this, quote, people with these inclinations just can't be ordained. As further proof, Church Milton has obtained a secret 12-page email sent to all the nation's bishops more than 20 years ago in June of 2002. It's from the Catholic Medical Association and reveals the full scope of not only the tragedy, but that bishops were informed by their own professionals that this was indeed a homosexual crisis within the priesthood. Here are some of these excerpts. We believe that our particular expertise and those of our colleagues in the Catholic Medical Association may be of help to the American bishops as they seek to create effective long-term strategies. Here's another one. It has become increasingly clear that almost all of the victims are adolescent males, not prepubescent boys. Another one. Priests should be screened for homosexuality by their bishop or their religious superiors prior to being considered for a position of responsibility in a diocese, religious community, or in the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Another one. The previous attitude of winking at homosexuality in priests must end. The church should not take the moral risk of allowing someone with SSA, same-sex attraction, homosexuality, to enter the seminary. Yet, with all that and much more in these 12 pages, the bishops themselves completely dodged the issue and still do to this very day. That detailed email, again, we have it right here, was sent to them in 2002 and authored by some of the most knowledgeable, faithful Catholic men in the field of psychiatry from the Catholic Medical Association. Yet just two years later, the bishops permitted the John Jay College study to publish its report detailing the, on the one hand, that four out of five victims were adolescent males, and yet on the other hand, explicitly denying the crisis had anything to do with homosexuality. Of course it had to do with homosexuality. The vast majority of abusers were adult homosexual males attacking and victimizing post-pubescent males. However, turning our attention back to the dominant lie within the church, the organization Outreach, an LGBTQ Catholic resource, that's what it calls itself, and a favorite source for James Martin, this group lies through its official teeth with online deceptions like this article. Look at this headline. Jesuit psychologist, gay priests are not the cause of clergy sex abuse. 
It's a clever deception which conflates findings of various studies, cross-tabbing unrelated data points to deliberately declare unsupported conclusions like this. LGBTQ people were not and are not the problem of the clergy sex abuse. Numerous international studies actually determined there were more heterosexuals who offended in the church. Now, notice the deceptive arrangement of those statements. Take the first one. LGBTQ people were not and are not the problem of the clergy sex abuse. Well, of course, LGBTQ people are not the cause of the problem. How many lesbian Catholic priests do you know? How about bisexual or transgender priests? This is called creating a straw man. No one has made that claim. The claim and the fact is the homosexual priests are the problem, not lesbian or transgender priests, which of course don't exist. Then the even more irrelevant statement. Numerous international studies actually determined there were more heterosexuals who offend in the church. Well, this is another lie. First, of course you would expect there to be more heterosexual abusers because there are more heterosexuals, period. The question isn't are there more cases among heterosexuals than homosexuals. The question is the preponderance of cases which relate back to homosexual priests. Are there coaches and teachers and janitors who are heterosexual who abuse young girls? More than likely, sure, of course there are. But even given the much larger number of heterosexuals in the church, a whopping 80% of adolescent abuse victims were boys and their abusers were homosexual men. That's what it says in this letter from the Catholic Medical Association to every bishop in America. These radical homosexuals in the church, including the bishops who shield them, are absolutely, no doubt about it, absolutely the cause of the sex abuse crisis. And let's go even a step farther. They're the cause of the demise of the church itself. These men not only rape and pillage bodies, they also, even more so, rape and pillage souls. They cannot communicate the truth of the gospel because they do not live it and they do not believe it. And no one can give what he does not have. This is the reality of the church in the 21st century. Until this evil is expunged, and men like James Martin are driven from the church's ranks, New Way's ministry is completely condemned, and outreach is excommunicated, nothing will change because the skeleton, the bones for change are not there. The heart and the soul is, of course, because that belongs to Jesus Christ. But as for the rest of the body, the corruption is so complete so institutionalized, even 20 years ago, by these medical professionals saying it, that nothing less than a radical intervention will save her, at least here in the West. Whether that comes directly from God or from God through human agents is really the only question. But it will come because God is always faithful to his promise, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Thank <laughs> you.